Hello and welcome to this week's um, how to create um, the golden age style of music tutorial thing. Haha, <laughs> I'm getting worse at this, obviously. So um, welcome back. Um, I've been thinking a little bit about um, how to brand this whole thing that I'm that I'm doing and um, what the core values are. So um, at least for me right now, um, the things that I really want to focus on are obviously the music um, and secondly, the community. So, um, you know, those are, those are the most important things for me, um, not necessarily in that order. I think that um, together we are much better. So um, community is a really big, important part of um, what I do in this um, YouTube worldy and also the forums as well. There's, there's a few of you as well who follow me from different forums and thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it's been great to get to know you guys who have followed me over as well to YouTube. Um, it's been great. It's been a it's been a really cool journey. And you know, I just want to say thank you. You know, started off making covers many many years ago, and um, yeah, it's just fun to be here. Um, you know, we can talk about that again, can't we? You know, it's it's been turning into like a, a vloggy kind of musicy channel. You know, a little bit of talking about stuff and a little bit of. Uh, or a lot of composing. You know, I just want to honor you guys and, and just say uh, thank you. And if you like it, let me know. Um, and we can continue going down this route um, where I talk a little bit and then I show you what I've been doing and we learn and we have fun at the same time. So anyway, right, let's get back into this. Um, too much talking, Jeff, shut up. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to go over to the logic scene. There we are. And I'm just going to press play. And uh, you can listen to what I've done so far. As you can see, I've done loads. Um, maybe see if I can get this into the same, all into, there we go. So you can see what I've been doing. And uh, yeah, let's just take a listen.
Wonderful. Okay, right, transition back over. Got to say it to myself or I will forget. So um, the let's start off at the top, at the beginning. Okay, so um, tempo. One thing I didn't say last time was I'm altering the tempo ever so slightly. So if I just make this bit bigger, you can see that I am altering uh, between 120 for the first half and 118. And that is essentially it's just to give a little bit of movement. We don't want too much movement because then it's not going to it's not going to feel natural. But um, as I was going through it, I was conducting. So da ba bum bum ba ba da dum, ja da. And I was I was making a note about where I was speeding up and I was slowing down a little bit, so that I could then go to my tempo and say, okay, right, let's you know do this as if I was conducting it. Yeah. Um, and because of that, then I was able to get a more musical um, flowing uh, track. Okay, so I knew that I wanted to go down to 110 here, by the way, and then, um, you know, and have a little bit of a bump here and a bit, bit of a bump there, here a bump, every bump, bit up, bit up. Okay, uh, so, you know, we can, we can do that and we can add more realism in, because that's one thing that really does just, you know, stop us from connecting with the piece is the fact that you know when we listen to those old songs those are really really old pieces of music whether it was on the radio and it was the beatles or whether it was you know um uh, i don't know like F any film you know so like i was watching um edward scissorhands the other day and i was just blown away about how it just like swells and then slows down and then just you know and just gets huge and then just plummets and you know it's, it's that's the great thing about music isn't it you know that, that's what we want so even though we've got all of these articulations and all of these things that really help us we've got to remember that in a digital domain we've got to put all those things in so if it helps you then you know you can sit down and, and just list all the things that the that you can possibly alter or change you know so like you know the obvious ones are um tempo and pitch everybody kind of gets them so like in this piece starts in c minor finishes in g minor so there's three and there's three different key changes in there um it's, it's intentional okay and then the second thing that i wanted to do was go to the tempo i went oh great okay and then i went over and you know went to the modulation wheel and then added um uh, you know different modulation about how the how the um, instruments are being played are they being played softly or are they being played hard so that's another one that we can do and then i was thinking about volume how loud or quiet they are yeah so those you know that's just four um i will be going in and changing you know like things like vibrato yeah or um or trills i've already got you know you can see that i've got string trills and and i've even got a flute trill ready because i know that i'm going to be doing stuff like that okay so we are going to be um exploring all those different kind of things and and in what order to do them in um my order fluctuates with my mood <laughs> and and that works well for me um but for you it might be that you just need to get one thing done at a time and just gradually work your way down the list and if that works for you great uh, doesn't really work for me though okay so today we're now going to be looking at the brass and the woodwinds you can see i've put um piano reduction in as well uh, but it's not um it's not really essential to the it's just it's just going to be enforcing just the attack of certain certain parts okay so I'm going to jump into uh, bar, what is it, 29? Okay, no, it's not. It's about bar 40 or something. 44. Okay, and we're going to be looking at the spick strings first, though even though we're going to be looking at brass, I added this sound, this, this, uh, this part in, which is just really, really interesting. And this is like, before this section sounded like it was John Williams, like, you know, some of the others did um but the, there are certain things that you can do in your arrangement process that actually make it stand out to to feel like it's going in a different direction and for this section in particular i added this spick strings part that is um 
you know, it's very, very Danny Elfman. So if we look at it, you can see so many notes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's, so there's three different parts here that are going on. We've got uh, triplets here, which is the main part that is being uh, somewhere down here. Oh, yeah. So by here, that is being doubled. Um, and then we've got a second part as well that is uh, that is being played here. And um, that is essentially harmonizing with that. And then we've got down here even more notes. And that is just the bass line. Okay, so there's lots of things uh, strengthening it. Uh, but we'll take a listen to that. Okay, so you know this is another way that we we're, we're varying as well. So so we're um, varying the um, rhythm as well, which was one of the ways that we could do that. I didn't say I didn't mention, um, but you know that that's one thing that we can do. We can vary rhythm so that we um, get less bored. And in this sense, we've got. Um, two rhythms going on at the same time. So we've got uh, triplets, like really fast triplets, really. It feels like it's in six, um, but it's actually in three. Um, and then underneath it, we have just got straight crotchets, yeah, in four. So we've got a three and four. Um, and that is something that is really, really um, reminiscent of something that Danny Elfman would do as well. So if we go back to uh, the logic again and we have a look at the last bit it suddenly goes from three and then we've got these we've got three beats yeah of um of crotchets or quavers rather yeah so we've got three beats of quavers um after one beat of a triplet and that works really, really well because you've got three and then you've got a smaller three as well. So you're going ba 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 ba. Yeah. So if you're if you are wanting to do um multiple rhythms um in the same bar, kind of map it out so you know, okay, I've got triplets here for one crotchet, but then for these quavers, I'm gonna have them over three beats so then it's a bar of four with a triplet and three crotchets so then you know you are essentially halving the time yeah you're, you're halving the time signature yeah so for this for this section um it's you know it's it's, it's quite a i wouldn't say it's a simple thing to do but it's, a, it's, it's probably the most straightforward thing that you can do in terms of um, adding interest, um, rhythmic interest, that isn't just counterpoint. Okay, uh, so let's just take a listen to these brass parts. Okay, so um, as you could hear at first, we have lots and lots of variation. So we got short notes, we got long notes, and we got marcatos. Okay, so 
short notes playing and then I'm, I'm literally I'm switching as much as I possibly can so that we can get as much variation in as well yeah so I'm not just relying on you know one type of articulation if that's what you're doing in your um in your pieces and you're unsure about why it doesn't sound realistic that's probably one of the main reasons okay it's probably because um what you need to do is you need to go and have a look at what your articulations are actually mapped to and then where you want that specific articulation you add it in there um, one of the ways that I get around this is that on my keyboard, um, which hopefully at some point I will be upgrading, um, it has a um, a pad on it, so a drum pad. Uh, for me, I go, I, I went into the settings and I changed those drum pads, so I had um, eight C, eight CC um, programmed uh, articulations, so that when I'm performing, if I know on the fly that I want this at a certain point, then I can just hit the drum pads and it's done for me. Yeah. So there are ways about making it more simple instead of going in and just manually putting in. For some of these, like this section here, um, I had to go in, you know, I couldn't hit the drum pad quick enough. Um, so, you know, that is something that I would, I would say doing. And in terms of libraries, uh, what am I using? I am using Spitfire horns. Caspian horns and um, orchestral tools horn, uh, which is the majestic horn. Highly recommend that one. It's like two quid, really, really good. Um, and oh well, two quid. I think it's like two euros. So yeah, it's, it's brilliant. It's really, really good for that. That cheap. It, they make incredible instruments. I'm really starting to get into um, using them a lot. So yeah, if you want some cheap instruments that horn, majestic horn is, is great. It's really, really cool. Okay, um, bit of a note, I love Caspian. It's one of my favorites. Um, however, um, you have to set a delay when, so you can you can play it in and it's great and it'll sound lovely, but when you play it back, um, it will be slightly late. So what you need to do is you need to go up to here where it says delay, um, click on it, and then put in, um, I think it's, Eight minus 80 milliseconds, which came out to about 154 ticks, I think. And if you want to know what ticks are, I'll tell you in another video. Okay, so um, yeah, so that was the first bit that you heard as well. Here it was um, just long swells. Yeah, and I've done that because I've got spiccato in the top strings um, and I wanted to just add a little bit more variation. Didn't, but, but then this is, um, this is supposed to be uh, music that is for the background, background music. You know, this is interwoven kind of music. So this isn't a main theme, it's just something to tie two themes together. Then coming into the next section, I have added just some swells because it's uh, th this next section between, you know, bar 18 and 28 or whatever it is, um, is a, um, was it oh it's it's theme a okay so um so it's theme a but i'm, I'm using longs uh, as if to give more of a romantic kind of feel to it um and we've got the uh, the trumpets that are playing the melody okay and then the rest of these here they are essentially just swelling then the interesting bit, we've got the woodwinds that come in. I'll solo the woodwinds so you can hear them. Uh, and they are playing some lovely stuff. Okay, so you can hear they're, they're playing lots of stuff that you would <laughs> typically um, hear a woodwind section playing. So they're mainly playing the melody, um, but then we've got these lovely 
you know, like swirling uh, motifs that are interlocking wares so that you are getting a little bit more variation as well in that. And then with the brass, uh, if we solo that, you can hear that most of the counterpoint is between these two. Yeah, so really simple again. Um, then we've got that, the, the part that we started off with, um, going into uh, finally the string and piano reduction. Okay, um, so if I just unmute that, you can take a quick listen to that. So the thing that you'll you'll notice about the last one is it's in a different key again. It's in G minor. Okay, so the parallel minor, um, and uh, essentially you don't need to prepare your key changes in you know especially if you want to add a little bit more um, excitement to your into your um, into your pieces. Yeah. So I've given one example where I've gone from I think it was bar twenty eight, twenty eight. Yeah. So this this section here, I'm I'm, I'm moving uh, from um, C minor into G major. Um, so I'm using a classical cadence because you know it's it's quite accessible um, the classical cadence where you you know all you need to do is do a perfect cadence followed by a pivot chord and that's a chord in two in in both keys um, that has at least two notes that are the same, um, and then a perfect cadence in the new key. So in this instance, I did um, uh, G minor to C minor, um, then I did C major, and then I went D major to G major. Yeah, that C major, the only difference is that the E flat is sharpened in G major. And later on, I've just jumped from G minor, G major to G minor, sorry. So um, that's something that we can do and it's it's quite accessible to, to just jump from one key to another. You can slowly transition as well. Um, so I'll just get a piano up. Okay, so I think that's everything as well for this week. Um, my top tips to finish on are, uh, so with brass writing, what you want to do is you want to keep everything quite close together, where I said um, with the strings, you want your harmonies to be quite spread out. It's the opposite effect for the majority of the brass. Um, with the exception of the horns. So ho the horns are an interesting one. You, you can go in octaves if you wanted. Um, they work best in thirds, fourths, and fifths. So still quite close together. Um, the, the difficulty with octaves is that um, the range of a horn um, 
would push you to do the octaves so they were lower, not higher. And that's not always what you want. Um, and it's just because of the way that the horn is is, is performed um, so that, you know, a lot of the time, even though, you know, modern horns, they have um, valves, you can still create um, what you want by sticking your hand in and, you know, manipulating the harmonic sequence. Okay, so, uh, yeah, you know, horns, fourths and fifths are really, really nice, and sixths can be really nice as well. Um, octaves, you can do it, um, but, you know, it's you've got to be careful with it. You, sometimes, you, you know, you think, oh, this is going to be a beautiful note, and then suddenly, you know, your sample will go, hmm, that's higher than an F above middle C, you can't do that. Or, yeah, an F. An octave above middle C, so C, F4, F4 um, then you know you're going to start to to go into problems there. Um, with everything else, keep them nice and nice and close. I would say um, woodwinds, they can do anything. <laughs> there's there's nothing woodwinds can't do. Okay, so as you've seen today, I've mainly um, you know shorts and longs are what I've been focusing on for the past week on this on the in my in my spare time. Um, and yeah, I've had no issues with with how I want woodwinds to do it. It's, it's all about pairing. What what do you choose to pair together? So um, you know, for the for the um, let's just move back over to logic. Okay, so um, you can see that here, horns and trumpets, really nice. Um, pairing one's quite raspy one's quite soft and muted and um, so that they fill in the gaps that they the other one doesn't have and um, here tuba and i've put the tuba with the double bass you can't see that there because it's not been yet okay so whenever the tuba's playing the double bass is playing as well um and yep yeah, there uh, and then uh, I would say that another good one is double bass and bassoon. Okay, so if I just solo this bassoon, solo my friend, um, and then have a look for the double bass in the strings. It, it, you get a little bit of the raspiness from the from the the bassoon just filling out those low end double bass notes. Oops, easy. Yeah, so we got octaves in both of them. Obviously, the double bass is a little bit more. Um, well, it's an octave lower. Okay. Um, should really have used, could use a contra bassoon. I didn't feel I needed it really. Um, yeah, so uh, another good one as well is, you know, the clarinet and the and the bassoon part as well. They're, they're brilliant, really, really good. Um, piccolo and flute, it's an obvious one. But um, yeah, use the piccolo, but be very afraid. Be very, very afraid. Um, usually in an orchestra, you only have one piccolo, so don't double up. <laughs> uh, yeah, just use your flutes. Um, and choose as well um, what you want to, you know, especially if you're doing this and somebody says, hey, we're going to give you £10,000 to, you know, get an orchestra to, to record this. Um, think about what you're using in terms of piccolo and flute. So if it's a really energetic, lively part, um, then I would go, I would opt for the flute because the flute has more, it has a similar range. It, it can't go quite as high as the piccolo. Um, but when you do play up, it goes really shrill and really bitey. And, and that, is a, that is something that you really, really want um, for those ty types of pa um, passages. Um, however, the piccolo it sounds quite playful um when it's being played it's really 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 sharp um especially when you go quite high up because it's such a small instrument um 
but yeah, it does, it does sound really playful. So for this particular part, Yeah, so one's in 4-4, four, four, one's in 3-4. Um, that's something that could be really, really good. Anyway, I could go on. I could keep on going, couldn't I? Shut up, Jeff. What are you doing? Okay, um, so, yeah. Let's just uh, switch back and say goodbye. So, uh, yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, so much for coming again this week and listening to me ramble on about, you know, what I've done in this piece. Um, I hope that there's been some things in here that you go oh i'll give that a go i'll give that if and if you want more information just drop a comment i'm really happy to um to message you about that okay so um yeah see you later guys godspeed